Hello everyone. Uh, this is the second section in the syllabus concerning the syllabus of the course of linguistics for the third year students. Uh, just a, a quick uh, review of what we did before uh, and just to remind you that in section one we presented and discussed uh, themes related to social linguistics. In this second section, in this second part of the syllabus, of this syllabus, the third year syllabus of linguistics, the course of linguistics, we are going to talk about a new uh, issue, new subject, that is psycholinguistics. Before we start talking about uh, psycholinguistics, let us say that uh, psycholinguistics, as well as social, as, uh, as well as uh, social linguistics, they are macro social linguistic uh, subjects. Why? Because uh, they they are, let's say, um, a, 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 a coupling of two different domains. In social linguistics, we saw before that it is a, a hybrid, uh, let's say, subject that couples on one hand language and on the other one uh, sociology or society. Now, in psycholinguistics, it's uh, coupling on one hand language and on the other one psychology. So psycholinguistics, this is going to be the core of the second section of the second part of the third year syllabus uh, concerning the course of uh, linguistics. Now theme five will be an introduction to psycholinguistics. In this theme, we shall have to cover three main uh, points. First one, definitions of psycholinguistics. Second one, the emergence of psycholinguistics, and the first, the third one, the goals and scope of psycholinguistics. Um, if we talk about uh, what psycholinguistics is, or try to define psycholinguistics, we can say that uh, psycholinguistics is a branch of study that combines the disciplines of psychology and linguistics. Uh, say that it is uh, a, a, a branch that combines disciplines of psychology and dis linguistics, as we uh, uh, as we usually refer to such a uh, combination by uh, a hybrid discipline, a hybrid discipline, uh, a hybrid discipline. As I said before, it belongs to macro social linguistics. Now, uh, uh, it's it's a discipline that combines uh, psychology and linguistics and studies the relationship between psychology and linguistics. Now, uh, psycholinguistics is concerned with the relationship between the human mind and the language, as it examines the processes that occur in the brain while producing and perceiving both written and spoken discourse. This is to say that uh, 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 when we talk about psychology and language, if we want to uh, be more precise, it concerns the mind. Psychology means the mind. And psychology is a scientific study of the psyche and the mind. Our focus will be on the mind, in our case, and language. In other words, psycholinguistics attempts usually to explain how language uh, is processed, it means in the mind, and before that, how it is acquired, how it is processed and how it is produced. Uh, while studying these three processes, language acquisition, language processing, and language production, folks will be usually on what mental uh, processes or cognitive processes they come to interplay while we produce language. Here we talk about both uh, the spoken language, the spoken discourse, and the written discourse. So this is uh, uh, the first, let's say, uh, definition of psycholinguistics. Now, let's talk about the emergence of psycholinguistics in the scene of, uh, let's say, um, in the scene of linguistics. Overall, it's like what, what we said before about social linguistics. Psycholinguistics, it's a very recent discipline. Somehow, it's a new discipline. Why? Because it has evolved or it evolved only in the second half of uh, the 20th century. Second half of the 20th century, uh, starting from the 1960s. Uh, before that, of course, this does not mean that the study of the mind and language does, did not exist. Rather, it existed. 
but we are talking about psycholinguistics as it is now uh, as it is now uh, considered as it is now studied it is very recent in one word we can say the study of the mind and language is not recent it has uh, let's say uh, existed since uh, let's say old and ancient traditions we see this afterwards with the greeks egyptians etc uh, uh, during the uh, during the renaissance the middle asia renaissance the 18th century 19th century until the 20th century but uh, psycholinguistics as a discipline it is a recent uh, subject that has evolved only uh, since uh, the second half of the 20th century uh, starting from the 1960s uh, uh, as we said also uh, also as we said uh, before uh, regarding social linguistics uh, the emergence of psycholinguistics came as a reaction let's say between inverted commas the, the the failure of some linguistic theories that prevailed during the third uh, the, during let's say the 20th century mainly uh, structuralism and uh, uh, other let's say uh, other theories that did not pay attention to uh, the study of the mind uh, considering that uh, structuralism as a linguistic theory uh, it did not it did not give importance to the mental processes while producing or while processing language simply because structuralists focused only on the description of language form and neglected any any anything that has to do uh, with the mind uh, 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 this is the main the main criticism that was uh, done by noam chomsky uh, uh, against structuralism and structuralists simply because these schools they were based on the uh, a theory to psychology that is or approach to psychology that is behaviorism and as we know behaviorism uh, uh, in its um, fundamental let's say assumption uh, to explain how we humans come to develop our human behavior and language is an example of a human behavior it did not give room for the importance of the mind why because behaviorists has believed that if you want to uh, describe uh, and explain how we humans come to uh, to produce our and to develop our human behaviors including language uh, we, we should not uh, we should not pay attention to the mind simply because behaviorists uh, focus on the description of what is observable what is concrete what is tangible and the mind is something that is let's say abstract it was totally overlooked by behaviorists and of course structuralists based on behaviorists overlooked the description of uh, uh, meaning and focused only on the form so chomsky uh, reacted against structuralists against behaviorism and said that we cannot uh, we cannot describe language without giving sense to uh, the role of the mind uh, and the, of course to, uh, to to the role of the mind uh, uh, in the production in the acquisition processing and production of language based on this new notion let's say the importance of the mind in relation uh, to language has emerged or emerged and with the emergence of this new idea that is the relationship between the mind and language psycholinguistics emerged. this is an overall let's say uh, explanation about how so psycholinguistics came to emerge in the scene of linguistics but if you want to categorize the uh, categorize let's say um, categorize the, uh, the emergence of psycholinguistics of course, according to the available literature, according to many scholars, according to many historians who uh, uh, try to uh, talk about the emergence of psycholinguistics, they usually talk about two periods of time. Uh, the period that is preceded Chomsky, Chomsky's theory, and the period that uh, came after uh, uh, the emergence of uh, uh, Chomsky's theory. By this, we refer to the pre chomsky era and the post chomsky era in the pre generally when we talk about the pre chomsky era uh, we go uh, very far to uh, ancient civilizations we start with the egyptians the greek philosophers enter the earliest empirical studies in the uh, 18th century 17th and 18th centuries coming to the cognitive neuropsychology in germany 
in the 19th century and of course as i talked before with the early 20th century influence uh, of behaviorism now talking about the post chomsky era generally it started as i said before with the mid 20th century and uh, influence and some studies that uh, came during this era and of course with the, the findings that emerged with uh, the, the, the the sciences that looked for the importance of the mind in the production of language in the early 20th century. Overall, this is about the historical development of, uh, let's say, psycholinguistic. psycholinguistic. Now, let's move to the third point in this uh, in this uh, presentation, in this first, in this fifth theme about the introduction of psycholinguistics and talk about the goals and scope of psycholinguistics. Now, regarding these uh, the goals of psycholinguistics, we have it is argued that the overall scopes of psycholinguistics concern answering questions such as there are two main questions that can identify what this, the goals of psycholinguistics are and what is the scope of psycholinguistics. Question one: What knowledge of language is needed for individuals to use language? And second one is very it's more precise than the first question. It is what cognitive processes cognitive or mental processes that are involved in the ordinary stage of language process. I think question two is very fundamental. It's very important. Why? Because this is the core of psycholinguistics. Why? Because psycholinguistics concerns itself uh, in, in giving us, uh, in, in explaining uh, how the mental processes or cognitive processes come to interplay while we process language. Uh, overall, uh, these are, let's say, uh, this is all what has been, uh, what we can present about theme five, an introduction to psycholinguistics. Thank you very much.